Afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here on Crime 2 News First at 4. I'm Whitney Ward. We begin tonight as winter weather is arriving soon here in the Inland Northwest. Look at that snow in the mountains and out on the Palouse. Schweitzer Ski Resort near Sandpoint tweeting out they got two inches of fresh new snow overnight. And WSU Pullman also tweeted out some pictures of fresh snow there on the Palouse this morning. So on that note, we want to send things straight to our chief meteorologist, Jeremy Lagoo, tracking this storm system that really is bringing all kinds of snow and rain here to the area. Uh, you know, it's one of those ones where we just aren't going to catch a break. Maybe Thanks. tomorrow, though. Tomorrow's a little bit of a break, but okay. tomorrow still plays a big role in what we wind up seeing. Here, let's do this manually. Typically, I, you know, do this. I have a show that I built and I automatically set it all up. We're going to dive into this and kind of just get into the nitty gritty. Right now, a little bit of cloud cover, those scattered showers kind of moving out. For the most part, they're winding down. You're seeing a little bit of that activity north of Spokane, some through central Washington. But yeah, for the most part, they wind down and move out. By tomorrow, we catch a bit of a break, but with a kind of clear start to the day, that allows temperatures to drop in the morning. We struggle to warm back up. And by tomorrow night, an incoming push of moisture brings widespread snow. That starts tomorrow night. It continues overnight into Friday morning. By Friday morning, we are waking up to fresh snow on the ground in many locations, including Spokane and Coeur d'Alene, including Pullman and Moscow, including Deer Park, including Colville. You're waking up to fresh snow. That snow changes over to rain by the morning commute. By Friday afternoon, we're talking some serious wind and some very, very heavy rain falling across much of the region. It is a very active weather pattern. When it comes to the snow, one to two inches pretty widespread in low-lying areas. You head up into the mountains or off to the north. You're going to find a bit more, and the reason is it takes longer for that snow to transition into rain as those warmer temperatures arrive. So, breaking it down. Tomorrow morning, wake up to temperatures around 26 degrees. It's partly cloudy during the day, and then the snow, wind, and rain all move in to start Friday. All right, we're going to try to get ready for it, Jeremy. Thank you. Now to our other big story. Today, Crime 2 was the only TV station in the courtroom to hear opening statements in the trial of Yasir Daraji. He's accused of killing his ex-wife and then setting her body on fire. Crime 2's Janelle Finch is joining us now live from the Spokane County Courthouse with more on what the state and defense had to say today. Janelle? Yasir Daraji is facing second degree murder and harassment charges. Today, the state read its opening statements and began calling their witnesses to the stand. So far, witnesses have testified to what their final days looked like with the victim before her death. Back in 2020 or January 2020, Daraji allegedly strangled his ex wife, placed her body into a car on the South Hill and set her on fire. The state claims Daraji's DNA was found on the steering wheel cover and window lock of her car. Up to this point, Daraji has claimed he is innocent. But in this trial, the state is going to try and disprove this claim. And the medical examiner is going to be able to tell you Ibtihal Daraji's cause of death. That the medical examiner looked at photos and could see broken bones in the throat. The hyoid bone had been broken in two places. Medical examiner will tell you that's an injury consistent with having been strangled. Prior to the alleged murder, Daraji and his ex-wife were having troubles in their relationship. In 2016, Daraji's ex-wife filed a declaration with Spokane County that Daraji was abusive towards her. Two years later, she reported to being kidnapped at gunpoint by Daraji's family in Iraq. In opening statements, the state attorney shared that Daraji and his ex-wife continue to have problems in late 2019. Spokane police would later find her disfigured body in her car January of 2020. It is important to note that the court did not hear the defense's opening statements today. They have chose to reserve those opening statements for when they begin pleading their case. The judge says testimonies are set to last over several weeks. And over the course of this trial, the jury is set to hear from the victim's friends, from Daraji's friends, from Daraji himself, and other key witnesses. Reporting live from the Spokane County Courthouse, Janelle Finch, Crime 2 News.
All right, Janelle, thank you very much. Now to a developing situation this afternoon. A shooting in northeast Spokane caused an elementary school to go into lockdown as a precaution. Spokane police say Bemis Elementary was on lockdown after a suspect ran from the scene. It's unclear if anyone was injured in this shooting. This is still a developing situation. We're working to get additional information. We'll bring that to you just as soon as we have it. Two 16-year-olds have been arrested for the fatal shooting of a 20-year-old man in Moses Lake Sunday morning. One suspect was arrested early Monday. The other was arrested just a few hours ago when he reportedly turned himself in to Moses Lake Police. That shooting happened on Sunday morning. Police arrived to find two victims with multiple gunshot wounds. One man was pronounced dead shortly after. A 17-year-old boy was also shot. Police do not believe this shooting was gang-related. They are still investigating. One person is in jail tonight after a stabbing near Peaceful Valley last night. Spokane police say the victim was stabbed in his arm and face. He is reportedly, though, in stable condition tonight. This comes, though, just one week after another man was shot and killed in that very same area. The Spokane mayor and the police chief continue their conversations about crime in the city. During a telephone town hall meeting just last night, Mayor Nadine Woodward said her $1.2 billion budget for next year will focus on people and public safety. According to data from the city, property crime itself is up 24% over the last year. Spokane Police Chief Craig Meidel said the police department will add an additional 40 officers to their patrols starting in January. Uh, we're also going to be going to a little bit of a different sector, uh, we're breaking up how we, how we uh, divvy up our patrol sectors. So the officers will have a smaller area to patrol. Our hope is, is that we'll reduce the, the commute time in between calls as well. Uh, and so we anticipate the, the community should see a difference in January because we are moving more of those patrol officers back into the, the field. Now, based on the mayor's 2023 budget proposal, more than $73 million will go to the police department. That's a 7% increase from last year. It's also the department getting the most money of all, followed by the fire department, which will get almost $47 million. The budget, though, itself will not be finalized until it is approved by Spokane City Council. Election day is almost here and you're probably seeing a lot of political ads online and on TV. Several Creme 2 viewers reached out to our Verify team about one ad in particular by Idaho Senator Mike Crapo. Our Mark Hanrahan looked into it. Joe Biden, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi just supersized the IRS to get more money to spend. $80 billion, five times the current budget of the IRS, 87,000 new recruits, an IRS larger than the Pentagon. It's that last claim that has generated questions. Viewers like Steve wrote in to ask, an IRS larger than the Pentagon? Is it true? Let's verify. Our sources are the Inflation Reduction Act, the Treasury Department, IRS Commissioner Charles Reddick, and the Department of Defense. Let's start with the ad's claim about an additional $80 billion for the IRS. $80 billion. That number comes from the Inflation Reduction Act, which was passed earlier this year on party lines. It allocates $80 billion over the next 10 years to fund several IRS functions, including taxpayer services, enforcement, operations, and more. 87,000 new recruits. So now, what about the claim of 87,000 new recruits? That number comes from a May 2021 report from the Treasury Department, which estimated a funding bill similar to the one that passed, and it would allow the IRS to hire 86,852 employees over the next decade. In a letter to the Senate, the IRS commissioner wrote, the IRS has fewer frontline experienced examiners in the field than at any time since World War II and fewer employees than at any time since the 1970s. The letter goes on to add, these resources are absolutely not about increasing audit scrutiny on small businesses or middle income Americans. An IRS larger than the Pentagon. And finally, what about claims of an IRS larger than the Pentagon? The Pentagon states online it houses approximately 24,000 military and civilian employees and 3,000 non-defense support personnel. While that is fewer people than the IRS plans to hire or currently has on staff, the claim needs context. The Pentagon is one building, which includes a small percentage of people who work for the Department of Defense. Altogether, the DOD employs more than 2.9 million service members and civilians, and it is the largest employer in the United States. 
So if you have something that you would like us to verify, you can send those to us at the email address verify at creme.com. Now coming up tomorrow, as the city of Spokane adds more speed zone cameras, you might be surprised to hear the city does not own those cameras or process any of those tickets. So if you do get a violation, do you still have to pay the fine? We're going to verify that tomorrow night right here on Crime 2 News at 6.